Is the mic is the mic good? Good morning, LibConf. How's everybody? Today, I want to, I want to talk about the old WordPress for big budgets. Um, the boring version of the talk is Word, WordPress for complex enterprise apps. About me, we uh, we champion WordPress for the lords who service the kings. So our our group our clients are agencies, and we build for larger. Uh, large organizations. Um, these slides will be available somewhere after the uh, event, so I'm going to go through them pretty quickly. Show of hands, if I can see with the, uh, the pro projector there. Um, developers of lockdown client sites. Your agencies, you're working on client sites. So just a few. Uh, de internal developers of corporate sites. Um, a few more. Developers of vertical market products. Just a few more. So who, what, um, none of the above? And a few more, so not too many hands. What, what means enterprise? Well, there's, uh, it, can, it could be Hello? Okay. Hopefully this is a little bit better. So performance and scalability, maybe. Uh, security concerns, rapid development, professional workflow, scale and complexity, or my favorite, big company politics. What, uh, can't talk about all of those, so this talk I'm going to talk about scale and complexity. That's, uh, that's always been my focus, and uh, that's, what, uh, that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, first off, though, I want to talk about uh, Schinkel's Law. Uh, the code quality of any given theme that you find out on the web is inversely proportional to the, how visually impressive it is. <laughs> I don't know how many of you have uh, come across that if you're developers, but uh, that has meant that uh, we, we typically create custom themes for clients um, because we have to start with uh, a good code base so that we can maintain it. So in days of your WordPress was just a blog, themes were just templates, sites were built by, by adding plugins, and cowboy coders ruled the land. Then the sellers came, they wanted sites for business, agencies emerged to serve them, designers envisioned great things, settlers wanted it now, and the cowboy coders failed them all. I see a few, few heads nodding up and down. Um, new sheriffs are in town, they're cleaning up bad practices requiring version control, multi-server deployment processes, something that uh, not all developers in WordPress do, um, and they separate concerns in, in code, all while respecting the townsfolk. Uh, that's the best I can do at telling stories. So um, our best practice is always best. Uh, if you're familiar, familiar with the community, the WordPress community, you know one of the, the mantras is no post types in a theme. And typically, that's so that the end users can switch their themes without losing their custom post types. But agency-built sites don't need to switch themes, right? So what, we're, what we've basically got is we've got two different groups. We've got the groups, the end users, uh, the power users using WordPress. And then we've got big businesses using it uh, built by agencies. So let's lay another sacred cow. And uh, Ryan's going to love this one. Um, death to the loop. Yeah, it's loop comp. I get the irony. Instead, use a MV star approach, um, also known as MVC, but we're not going to talk about a C. Um, some of you may be familiar that there are plugins for this, and they generally tend to rip out what WordPress is and replace it. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about being very what uh, my team likes to call WordPress-ish or WordPress-centric. And uh, this is inspired by Backbone, if you're familiar with the JavaScript library. So, models and views. Um, when you're building a system, uh, a large system that's going to be complex, uh, models and views for each post type, for each taxonomy, user, role, comments, and more. List classes to wrap WP query. 
give me a second here. I'm going to have to do my uh, little bit of water. So now I'm going to slow down just a, just a hair, and I'm going to talk about typical theme code. Um, you've probably seen code like this. Um, this is what I see in a lot of themes. Um, you've got your query, and then in this particular case, we're listing partners, um, just a, a sample example. And then we're, we're doing the, uh, the get permalink and the, the title to list them off. What would an MV star code look like? Instead, we would simply have a list, and, uh, and then we would have a title link. The theme code gets much, much simpler, and the code in the prior slide, that gets moved into your model. In that, ca in, in that case, you can use it wherever you need throughout your application. You don't have that littered throughout your theme. Another part of this approach is full visibility for themers. Every project I've been on has had multiple people Every project in the past several years I've been on has, has had multiple people working on it where we have different skill sets in each group. So we have some people that are really good with HTML and CSS, and they really don't know what uh, the little angle bracket question mark PHP thing is. Um, and, uh, and then we have other people who are really hardcore back-end PHP MySQL people, but they don't really know how to make... Um, uh, CSS work for them, and, and I would raise my hand, I'm one of those people. Um, so let's take a look at this, um, this code, which what it, the point of this is that we architected our models and views so that the themers, the people that don't really know uh, PHP that well, they're just, uh, they're just doing a layout, can understand it. Um, so this is basically creating a new object, um, and then the template, which is similar to get template part, Anything that you're going to do, the output HTML elements or CSS, we're going to do in, oops, sorry, wrong, wrong thing. We're going to do inside of a, of a sub-template. And then the objects, the person object, for example, will be visible inside this template. Down here is another approach. Instead of a for next loop or a while loop, we simply create a, a team list, and then we run the template on each team member or excuse me, not team member, but the hypothetical here is that there are different teams, different uh, law teams. Additionally, uh, those of you who've had to go through any code reviews, uh, if you've done anything on WordPress VIP, you're probably familiar with code reviews. Um, I will say that currently this is ahead of where WordPress VIP is. Um, they probably won't, uh, they'll probably frown on this specific approach, but uh, we've used it successfully in, in other clients. Um, so basically, instead of using the escape adder, the escape URL, the escape HTML, and the WP cases, we use a convention-based approach where the, uh, the method is your render method, and then the adder or title or HTML or URL are your... Um, are indicating your uh, escapes. So here's a, a little quick chart for that. Link, sorry, this uh, thing's not well designed. Link is, uh, and HTML both go through cases post. Um, adder goes through escape adder, and then if you don't have anything, we do an escape, uh, escape HTML on it. So you've already seen this, but uh, you've seen it in example code. Let me describe it for you briefly. You define a model with a method slug. Uh, automatically gets a view method called the slug adder with automatic escaping. So that's, that's kind of how we do that. The benefits of MV star are business logic in the model, repetitive HTML in views. Specifically, I'm referring to things like schema.org or... Um, or uh, image elements or link elements, those types of things where, um, where the themer can be taught that the methods that contain those are just uh, HTML elements. Simple, easy to read templates, that is a big one for, for us. Easier fragment caching, so each of these sub-templates can be cached automatically. And 
automated testing of this, of where you can actually run your, your models and views through testing and verify that they do not emit uh, insecure code. Fewer global variable bugs, fewer hook side effect bugs, separate team, separating team member concerns, so the HTML front end developer, the JavaScript front end developer, the, uh, the back end developer. And uh, enables reusable modules. Now you may say that plugins are reusable modules, but they're reusable at the level of the end user or the site builder, but they're not really often reusable at the level of the developer. Um, the, uh, this approach allows you to build reusable modules that are reusable at the API level. So, so these, these techniques, techniques are in use um, at projects we've done for Dell, projects we've done for Coca-Cola, some internal projects, and hopefully some other projects in the near future. But you ask, how would we do this? Do we want to go, in, is this a talk about, here's an approach and now I'm going to send you back to learn how to do it and to build it yourself? Now, so I'm gonna, what I'm here to do is announce a, a WP Live based on our about five years of experience in the WordPress space. This is probably iteration nine. Um, it's an architecture, not an MVC plugin. It is implemented as a plugin, but the point is that it's more of an architecture for you to build on. It's less a plugin for you to learn and use. We like to call it a foundation library to support the architecture. It's built for coders, not for end users or site builders. It's available now on GitHub. It's open source. And our goal is adoption among agencies, oops, uh, to ultimately see a large number of curated reusable modules and to enable faster implementation of complex sites. Thank you. Thank <clears throat> you.